Uh, okay, it says that I am live. Am I live? Hello to the YouTubers. Hello to the YouTubers. Hello to my YouTube crafty chat. Uh, it says it's starting soon. Where is the live stream? Well, I'm waiting to say anything of, of worth until the live stream is started. And I think there it goes. Oh, there it is. So, yay. Hello to all our peoples. Um, Heather is back now. Uh, so, you, oh. you, that, that's not Dawn, that's Erica, <laughs> by the way, Tara. And no, I don't look lovely. My hair's all wet and stuff, but I didn't feel like waking up my kids to use the uh, hair dryer. So, um, so we are here after hiatus. Yes. Two thirds of us are here. Wahoo. <laughs> Two thirds made it. And uh, I haven't heard anything yet from Dawn, so I hope her son is, is okay. Oh. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, everyone. orthopedic doctor is not not is kind of scary. Yeah. Well, and I I mean as far as being a good advocate for your kids, I I would take Dawn with me because having been a um, PT, she knows her way around injuries, but it's still oh, scary yeah. with your kids. <sighs> so Definitely. right now so I have the air conditioning on and I will Try and turn it off, but oh my God, it's miserable up here in the attic without without it on. So I, maybe I'll mute myself when I'm not talking. That'll help. <sighs> so, oh, what well. kind of crafty stuff have you been collecting for the last two weeks while I've been out babysitting? <laughs> okay, well, let's see here. I have. I finished the gray thing. Um. Let me see. Cool. So I try to hold it still long enough for the thing to focus on it. Hold it back so you can see it. Did it focus? Yeah, that is pretty. So it's a half circle. For those listening at home, it's a half circle pie shawl, uh, garter based lace uh, out of a superwash um, wool sock yarn that's just lovely and the pattern is out with the tester now and is uh, oops I was supposed to get it to the just remembered I was supposed to get it to the uh, tech editor yesterday whoops. Um, oops but um, I'm not sure exactly how soon the pattern's going to be out because um, I'm waiting for the yarn dyer to list the yarn, uh, she doesn't have it listed on Ravelry yet. Um, so it's there's an, I haven't found any way you can buy it since I bought it from Yarn Over Truck um, at Stitches. So it'd be kind of silly to specify an unavailable yarn. So I'm waiting for that to become available. Right. Um, then just because I was itching to cast something on, because of course you know all my lingering whips are not enough. Um, huh. I cast on just a plain non-lace half circle pie shawl. Right. And I don't know, it, you probably can't see. I can see dot, you know, dots of light, pinpoints of light, but I can't see much detail. Yeah, the color isn't going to show in there, but it's my, my black, purple, and red gradient. Oh, Cool. And so the the black isn't really a solid black. You can kind of see purple bleeding through. Um, let me let me try holding this up again for it to focus on. I love that. Um, There's a the the purpley the purpley red. Um, because I'm seeing the blue. I think I'm seeing the blue as a purple and the purple is as a purple. red. It's it, it's it's purple and red. Yeah, it goes it goes it's. Black, purple, and red. I gradient. can see the black in the middle now. That's beautiful. And it's it's from fresh from the cauldron. <laughs> it's their super wash gradient, and the color is called exsanguinate. What a perfect that name! An awesome, awesome name. I really like. So, that. 
Um, and I had a bit of a car trip on Saturday. We had to drive a couple hours to a family party, Ooh. a couple hours each way. So I got a lot done on that then. And the only other crafty thing is I did some organizing before I decided to cast on. And I have here enough odds and ends um, of sock yarn wow. for the contrasting parts for two, uh, at least two lefties. Ooh. So I gathered up all my, all my reds. Oh, pretty. That is a big plastic then, bag full of... Yeah, it's a gallon threads. plastic bag. And then, and then um, all my sort of brown and goldens uh -huh. for a different one. And that doesn't look like much, but it's actually enough for the contrast part of a lefty. So the other one is actually probably enough for the contrast of two lefties. So... Um, Maybe now I'll actually get around to making a lefty Yee. or three. Um, and then the, the non-crafty news. Um, yes, Tara, organizing before I cast on, but you notice I wasn't organizing the thing that I cast on. I organized something completely different <laughs> until I decided what to cast on. Um, I actually was jonesing to do something with my bibs and bobs of leftover hand spun. Um, I was wishing I had just a small, maybe like legal size pa piece of paper size um, loom for making a 1970s style wall hanging um, because chunky, not so great hand spun is, is great for for that perfect because it looks like an, but really it's just Erica's not that good at spinning um, <laughs> I wanted to go back to the, the lefties can you explain yes. uh, to to the folks at home what that is in case they don't know oh so lefty is a long um, okay so if you're familiar with um, the Hitchhiker Shawl by Martina Bain with the, the tooth points. Um, Lefty is, is kind of similar in that it's a big long shawl that has points that stick out and um, where the points are is actually, I'm doing a horrible job describing this, um, <laughs> are, it's a one solid color, but then there's these stripes of you use leftover sock yarn um, to make the little like a stripe with then a little blip at the end that sticks out. And I'm going to see if I can do the screen sharing. Um, it's like a crescent shawl. Cool. Um, uh, I'm going to see if I can figure out how to do the Google Hangout screen sharing to be able to awesome. put this up at least for those um for those at home uh no is it not gonna let you um what's well, not seeing the right the little green thing. rectangle with the it's arrow um item hang hang on i need to arr, 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 arr. Um, bother, bother. Do, 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 I know it has been. Do you want me to? Do you want me to um, share some pictures of? The Hang baby? on, I think I can do I've it. Got it. I, I think I can do it now. Let me see, and then because everything's going to be trumped by the baby. Uh, okay. Uh, All right. It's 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 not gonna be. So yeah, show the baby. All right. Um, and I I have to figure out the screen sharing thing. Okay. So, yay. 
Um, so thank you everyone for uh, saying, don't worry, take your time, go take care of a baby. Um, it was a really good thing that I went up. Um, they're, they have a three and a half year old who is a handful and uh, the new baby is the best baby in the world. He's just placid and sweet. And I said, my husband is going to be jealous because I've been sleeping with this guy for a week. And, and I, <laughs> I really was, I was in the room with him and it was just the two of us um, all night long. But I was able to get my sister a couple of nights of eight hours, which um, is not nothing as we know. So I am going to show you a picture. I know he is such a sweetie. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what he looked like. We did take, we went out into the world and we did things like go to a little beach in, in the area. And um, let's see, can you see that one, Erica? Yeah. Yes, he's so cute. He is a sweetie pie. And, and he is as good as he appears to be there. He was exactly that good. And I don't know if I can show you the, a movie of him. Let's see if that works. I love the little spit bubble. I know, right? He, he, was, um, he was very good at, uh, at, at that. And he was actually very good at smiling already, which I know people uh, say that's not possible, but there are kids who smile early. Now the blanket that he's lying on, the the quilt, mm -hmm. with the blue background and the sort of golden colored elephants, did you make that for him? No, that was um, uh, that was one of my sisters. This is the lake we were at in Syracuse. It was lovely. And there she is out with her three and a half year old rolling in the dirt, kind of, kind of like a horse. <laughs> uh, he is, he's a pistol. Wow. He's a lot of fun. We told lots of stories and, um, and that was good. I have a, a goofy, um, it's like a fake storytelling story thing that I've done with my kids and, um, and that I, I did with him because I didn't know how else to get him to go to sleep. So mm -hmm. I did the, this storytelling thing and he seemed happy as a clam to buy into it all right so this is him when he was waking up and this is how he wakes up with a smile on his face wow yeah he's really he's really a good little boy and i miss him a lot because that's it's hard to leave a baby that's a happy good baby well yeah yeah so you know it's easy when they're screaming and you go oh Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Too bad. So sad. Bye. bye But, um, totally. He, he was, he was great. Um, and I felt really bad though, because uh, I got a text from my sister last night at nine saying he won't go to sleep. What's wrong? <laughs> I, I said, well, you, the anti magic. It might be that you smell like dinner and <laughs> you should hand him off to your husband or, I can I can tell you what I did. I I've been telling you what I did, but we do. You, have you come across that Dr. Carp book? The um, not that we would need it because our kids are way past. Well, <laughs> they're mostly past it. Um, it's it. He came up with this thing called the five S's. Um, no. Uh, oh my God! If you if listeners are pregnant or uh, if you know people who have had a baby, especially one that's colicky because our oldest um, had a lot of trouble. He, um, he observed nurses on the floor when he was doing his rotation in the pediatric unit. He observed all the, or in the, the maternity ward, he watched all the nurses and he noticed that they were all doing some combination of the same five things. And so he started interviewing them and asking them, where did you learn how to do this? And what is it that you're doing? And why do you do it? And he kind of, condensed everything that he learned from them into five things to do. Uh, most babies don't need all of them. Most babies, one will do it. Uh, with ours, it was all five that we needed, but they are in no particular order because there isn't really one. Um, swaddling, 
shushing or sound or white noise. It's something in the background because the sound in the in utero, the sound is like the the volume of a vacuum cleaner, and it's the sound of the oh, blood wow. going yeah. around the uterus. So it's a really <laughs> low yes, yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> so you get kind of close to the baby and just go shh, and it's not a gentle shh, but it's a low one. You don't want to go shh because that wakes them up and then they want to do stuff. Um, so swaddling, shushing, swinging. So I would hold him close next to me and just swing him. And I'm not kidding. I did it this hard. And that kid passed out in like six mm -hmm. swings. And he's like, mm. um, swinging, shushing, swaddling, uh, the white, white noise. Uh, I had a fan on at night, a box fan. So that was a really low hum. And I think that helped him a lot. And sucking. And he, he didn't use a pacifier all the time. He wasn't dependent. But boy, he was treating my sister like she was an on-demand cow when I got there. She, he was, you know, it was the same thing that my oldest did to me. He was eating for 45 minutes. And then 45 minutes later, he was after her again. And I, I walked in the door and went, uh, no. He can he can go a lot longer than that without food. And where's the pacifier? He needs something to suck on. And we did. He slept the first night that I took him. She fed him at 7, and I woke up with him at 12.45. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. And then, you know, fed him, changed his diaper, fed him, swaddled him back up. He didn't want the pacifier. He was out cold. I put him back in bed. Oh, and my other thing is it's dark in the room. There is no way I'm going to let a kid mistake day for night because I can't live that way. So I didn't turn on anything. I had the light from outside, which wasn't very bright. And that was it. And, and then he just conked back out and he was out for a good three, three and a half hours. But that's, that's the swaddling thing. They get nice. They get nice and comfy in their little. He's a little baby burrito and so cute. Mm -hmm. So, I I sent her uh, videos on Dr. Carp because he is he is just awesome. Uh, Crooked Nits, I can tell you, K A R P <laughs> W K R P um, K A R P is how, how you spell his name. Yes, it, diurnal. Toshi, it's you. Oh, my God. Diurnal Rhythm for the win. Indeed. Uh, I don't, I feel bad for all my friends who've had babies who came out misunderstanding what day and night were for, because that's hard. And, and for those who haven't had newborns in their life, um, it's, it's pretty typical for them to have their days and nights backwards when they are born, because when they're in utero, when the mother is active, it rocks the baby to sleep. And when the mother is calm, the baby wakes up and does stuff. So, um, just so, that, which is why that swinging thing, you know, and, and a fairly, not aggressive, but a fairly strong swing does it for exactly yeah. that reason. They're just rolling around in the, in the sack. It's kind of like being on, on a raft. <laughs> And I, I had I had I had one kid who added an S to that. She added stand. I couldn't sit down. I had to be standing. Yes. And so I would walk around holding this heavy kid. Yes. Jiggling her like this on my shoulder because of course it wasn't my six pound fourteen ounce kid that was that way. It was my eight pound kid who was that yeah. way. Yeah. Um, and he was he's by the way ten pounds eleven ounces, and that's what I was walking around with. You know, and it was always on Holy his arm. Cow. So I am, I am toned right now from my baby regimen. But it's true. He loved it if I walked around. And, and he started reflexing towards the end, which is always really scary because when the stuff comes up into his throat, he'd start to get that really wet wheeze sound. And mm -hmm. if he's on his back and he does it, you get like, ah, I'm going to kill my sister's baby. That would be bad. But, um, but he never seemed perturbed by it. He never screamed or anything, and I just get him up on my shoulder, and nine times out of ten, within a minute, he'd have an enormous burp, and then he'd be out. <laughs> so he had his normal, like, you know, feed him, burp, feed him, burp, and then you put him down, he's passed out, and 30 minutes later, he starts to fuss, 
And one time my sister picked him up and it was kind of at this point in the pickup where he went, Whoa. <laughs> and we figured out he just, he has a late burp. Let him That's sleep. Wild. He burps, you put him back down. It's not all that much unlike men in general. <laughs> Now, now. <laughs> it's good to know that some things never change. But that was that was all my fun. Um, we did finish the blanket. I, I made the trim. I was actually looking for that picture. But I have something else to show you that is stunning. And well, I, I have I have one other thing oh, that is, isn't Go crafty, on. but um, so your big event during the last couple of weeks was the baby. Mm -hmm. Our big event was the graduation. Oh, that's right. Congratulations. Sarah's graduation. And I wish it would let me do the screen share because I want to show the picture. Can you, um, see, can you see a thing that says go to the old Google Hangouts or um, use previous Google Hangout or something like that? Because you might be on the new screen that doesn't seem to let you share a screen. Well, it has screen share, but the options it's giving me are not what I want oh. to show. Oh. They're, it's giving me Windows other things. You, did you scroll down? Yeah. Because mine was like right at the bottom. It won't let me scroll down. Oh, good Lord. Okay. Unless you I texted you. Um, I would have to open but, that app, and I'm close to crashing right now. Yeah. Um, but um, the other thing with that, which oh, I guess I'll post the link in the, um, uh, you know, for the, the notes. Cool. This, this is, I, I, I love showing this to people and seeing their different reactions. But um, one guess what this is. <laughs> Um, that looks like a braid of hair. Mm hmm That's your husband's beard? Yes, it is. Oh, my good God. <laughs> oh, my. Wow. <laughs> How long is that thing? Quite. I think the <laughs> longest bit is about 10 inches. I mean, it looks like a dead animal. It's just, you know, especially if you hold it this way, it looks like a rat or something. It's gross. Um, but Sarah has always hated since he grew his beard, and he was ready right. to be done with it. So we decided for a very special graduation gift, the morning of her graduation, she got to cut off his beard. So oh, wow. He filmed it. We filmed it and everything. He, I braided it, and and she cut it, and then he, you know, trimmed and shaved and all that, all that good stuff. But so we're, oh. we're now in discussions on what to do. He hasn't been ready to part with it yet, so it sits on the desk wrapped wrapped in a paper towel because the kids are completely grossed out by it, um, and, which is you know leads to some fun right there, um, <laughs> because we're just cruel as parents. But there's been much discussion about what to do with it. Now, because, you know, the, uh, the staple length is really long. <laughs> so uh, there, has, there has been much joking about, and I, and I do have a drum carter, about oh. carting it in with some wool and knitting something out of it and uh, oh my gosh you should have heard the kids screaming at the idea they just were so completely freaked out and repulsed and adamant against it and uh <laughs> which of course just makes me want to do it more right um, and not and not tell them until you know i've made something that they like and uh, I like Tara's idea to I, frame it I just and hang that. it next to her graduation tassel. We had thought about putting it in a little shadow box. Yeah, yeah. Do it you know, with her tassel and her graduation diploma. Or or mounting it like you do a, a deer head or 
or a fish or something, you know, mount it and then, you know, killed by Sarah Hernandez on <laughs> May 26, 2016. Um, oh my God. So that's, awesome. that was our, our big uh, thing. So that, that was, that was about two and a half years worth of beard. Um, so God. amazing. So uh, it, it's been really fun seeing people's reactions. Um, one little girl that we taught in class at church saw him on Sunday. Right. And she almost cried. Oh my goodness. She, she looked at him all shocked and said, Oh, your beard. Oh, oh what now? And she almost cried. It was hilarious. So um, little five year old girl was just couldn't believe he cut his beard. So that's our, our, our biggie. I may have some other really cool kid related news for you, but I, I won't be able to share that till next week. So very good. Uh, uh, right. If it's, if it, if it pans out, I'll share it. If it doesn't, then it won't matter. <laughs> then not. Uh, well, I am um, pulling up pictures that I've been wanting to share for several weeks and I was saving them all to do the, the week that I first dropped off the edge of the planet and um, and then I dropped off the edge of the planet so I wasn't able to share them but I'm I'm clicking on all the things right now so that's why you can't see me okay so here you are I'm back I am going to share and while I share I will tell you all about the things. So first off, I got some lovely gifts for my birthday. And this does not represent all of them, but it's, it's a start. So this is um, a, <laughs> a cake of yarn that AT sent me, uh, I don't know, AT, how many months ago? It's been sitting at the post office. I never got any kind of a notification that it was uh, that it was there and waiting. So I then, how did you didn't. find out? Um, because you... At finally asked me um, what I thought or if it was usable. Because At is not a not a knitter by trade, and I said, "What now?" And she said, "That ball of yarn that I sent you months ago." <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh huh. So I went I went down to the post office and said, "Um, guys." And they said, oh, yeah, you actually have a couple of things. <laughs> so, so that was one. And then I also received this. Oh, my goodness. Yes. This, I'm, this is incredible. And I, oh, where did I put the, I had a card that had everybody's names on these things. Well, I'll put it in the show notes um, because it's all of our books, all of them. This is a, a, a double knit cowl and it's so cool. All of our books are there and she used the variegated color. So it goes all the way through um, the rainbow, all the way around as you go, go around, the, around the thing. And wow, I thought that was amazing. And, you know, the card was all, wow, you're so not going to be able to wear this right now, but... But I'm taking it to Paris is what I'm doing. I'm going to represent, man, because that's awesome. That's cool. And if it weren't 1,000 degrees in here right now, I would absolutely have it on. But I didn't think dying of heat prostration was a particularly good thing to do on a film. So, No, then not, not good. AT went to a, a Renaissance festival, and she, because she, she listens and seems to know my boys well, she got them these little, um, they're leather bound. They look like little journals. Yes. They are leather bound. They are uh, acid free handmade paper and, uh, and they're bound in leather. And the boys uh, immediately started going, ooh, I could do this or I could do this. And uh, Thing too, who is there with his glasses on, um, he immediately started to write a song which he has in his in his uh journal nice. already he's 
he's trying very hard to be a good songwriter and he's he's doing a nice job so that's they are they are being crafty in their crafty journals so at thank you for that that's really awesome and they were so excited they have such a great image of craftlet listeners in general they 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 say it before i do how wonderful everybody is that we've really Aww. amassed such a great cross section and i said i think I think we self-select pretty well because we're makers and and not breakers and we are um, book lovers and I think that that is a nice a nice cross-section of people this yeah. is from my aunt Raven. I remember like way back when we first when we first started doing our crafty chat I shared a, a little wallet that she had made me and where she just um, reverse engineered a, a wallet and she did it out of uh, book material. And she wrote to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is, this is her again. She said, hello, I made a bag for you. I made things for Wesley and, or for the, the babies in, uh, in Syracuse. And I wanted to make something for you too. It isn't your fault you had your kids before I retired and started to make stuff. So here we go. <laughs> And she said, I tried to find some Madame Defarge themed fabric, but this Nevermore print was the closest I could find. It's designed by Gillian Foulard. And then she said, wasn't your old email address Gillian at something or other? And it was. It was way back when, uh, when women were told never, ever, ever to use their own name on their email address. So that dates me. And, um, and she gave me, she cut out the edge of the... Um, the fabric, the selvage edge. And so it's the Nevermore collection designed by Gillian, G-I-L-L-I-A-N, Fullard, F-U-L-L-A-R-D. And it's uh, London Portfolio is the name of that. That's the, really cool. The company. Yeah. So that's awesome. And I tried to take a picture where you could see that she she not only did such a nice job with the, the fabric and all of that, but that it's fully lined and it has zippered pockets, one on each side. And it's, it's huge. This could easily be, well, it's going to be a fantastic knitting bag, but it could easily be an overnight bag. You could just. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. It's, it's actually just to give you scope and size. Oh yeah. yeah that's a bag. That could, that could definitely be an overnight bag. And it's got Fabulous. And it's got nibs. There are nibs on it, which I love too. So I have the coolest aunt. Yeah. Well, cool aunties beget cool aunties, right? Evidently. Although I don't know how, how much she had to rock me to sleep. I think I was I was pretty happy to go to sleep. <laughs> My days were so difficult and I, I was so challenging. No, I was uh -huh. Mom tells me that I was pretty easy, so I hope so. The, the last thing that I have to share, because I haven't been able to do anything except rock a baby, um, well, recover from not having a voice and, and rock a baby, is I found an app on, uh, on the iOS store for Zentangles, and you have to pay to comment or like or respond in any way to the Zentangles and you can't upload um, your own Zentangles unless you, you pay. It's like $2.99 a month and I haven't been interested in paying for it. I just love, <coughs> excuse me, I just love looking at these and then occasionally taking a screenshot like this. I have never seen a Zentangle like that before. That's pretty amazing. Isn't that amazing? Let me see if I can get in a little closer too. Because that, that level of detail is just wild. And normally people don't Zentangle quite that um, colorfully. But there was another one and everybody was saying, oh my gosh, who invented that kind? Because they hadn't seen it before. Like I hadn't seen it before. And evidently it is a Zentangler... Um, and I saved her, her, the name of her uh, website. But she developed this, uh, a, a, what, she, what somebody referred to as a surefire way to um, shade, color, add sparkle to these, this gemstone idea. Because it's really tricky to 
to do that with watercolors or any other way. It's really yeah, hard it's to pretty get amazing. That sparkle. And boy, yeah, she and there were a bunch of these. I just this was the one that I liked the best. But um, but I thought that might inspire some of you as well to to take a look at the Zentangly thing. And you can see now that we've got a good one up here, you can see how really, really simple the, the repetition is. And you can also see like if you look underneath or you look at the edge of the bezel on the green, um, on the green gem and the little flower burst below it, if you look at it closely, you can see lines don't match, they don't touch each other, or they go too far, or they overlap kind of wonky, and it doesn't matter. It's oh, just... Yeah. It just is. It just is low stress and relaxing, and and I really have come to appreciate that in life because life. So wow, I was I was very excited by those, and now I'm thinking, oh, when am I going to find time? I want to find time to go zentangle. Wow. Yeah, I I tried it, and I'm just. Just not where my creativity lies. Let me put it that way. You are a warm fuzzy. So I'm a warm fuzzy. Yes. Okay. Your Which talent, is not to say talent. that I'm a furry. It's no, uh, no. There were what, what is it? There were warm fuzzies and cold pricklies. It was some psychology book about kids when I was a kid. So people were, you know, you want to be a warm fuzzy, not a cold prickly. So yeah, I definitely don't want to be a cold prickly. I did no. dye my shirt though. What? Back when I was doing dye class. Oh. Um, a shirt that I just loved, loved, and it, it shrank a little bit. Um, but the, you know, so did I. So see all the different color. I don't know if you could see the shading. It's kind of watery looking. Yep. The way the color is. Um, and it has a smaller um, daisy decal on the back. And it's um, got stained, but I didn't want to get rid of it. Uh -huh. So I dyed it in dye class. Um, so, see, I'm not wearing an, any knitwear, but it is, I'm wearing something crafty. Thank you, Tara. I like the color on me, too. Yeah, I think and that is an excellent Terracotta color. color, which not everybody can wear. I also look good in pumpkin orange, which is, is uh, not wow. that common. So, wow. Um, I know. I can send you all my pumpkin mm -hmm. orange. When I, when, when, luck, unfortunately, it's not something I can put on a resume, you know, <laughs> where it can wear pumpkin orange and terracotta. <laughs> but, um, Wouldn't it be awesome if that was something you could put on a resume? I know. And, um, oh, I have one bookie thing or two bookie things. Yeah. One is... Um, so Abby, for Honors English, has four books she has to read over the summer. Um, and the first one, um, she says is good, and I'll probably read it after she's done, is called How to Read Novels Like a Professor. Yes. We have had people talk about this before in comments on Ravelry and uh, mm -hmm. emails to me and on the website. And yes, I have a copy. So that's... Um, that's one that I think people in the, um, you know, in the whole, in the craft lit coterie might be interested in. Uh -huh. The same guy also has one, how to read literature like a professor. Um, but they're doing the, the novels one. Um, and the other thing is I, I, I finally found a Neil Gaiman book I can read. Because I had start, I had started Nevermore before, and I just couldn't get into it. I was like, "This is just too weird for me." And no, huh. um, but but American Gods. I love that book. I picked it up from the library on Sunday, and I'm already almost three hundred pages in. Yeah. So, um, I do I do predict that Sarah will read it someday, but. The fact that I recommended it is, you know, a big strike against it for her at the moment. Um, even though she's got a different Neil Gaiman book that she bought with graduation money that she's going to read. Um, yeah. But maybe she'll remember that I was right about the Harry Potter books and uh, 
uh, consider this. Um, Very so cool. it's it's uh, it's it's pretty. It's pretty cool. Definitely has some uh, adult Risky. material yes. in it. Um, uh, Wait, so you're 300 pages in. I can't. It's a tome. Um, how? What's the most recent thing that's happened that you can say without a spoiler? Who have you? Who have you met? Or what is? See, where is Shadow? That helps. Shadow is in Lakeside. Oh. Okay, you're just and, about to my hardest part to get through. And then the uh, the clunker has not fallen through yet. Right. It's still it's still December. Um, so and the and he's taken he's taken his little jaunt to Las Vegas and come back. Right. So um, it's uh, it's it's very interesting. I, I love, and I have loved this about Neil Gaiman since I read the Sandman comics back in 1991, was that he, he, he read everything clearly when he was a kid and a teenager, and so he has this incredibly broad knowledge of world mythology that he draws on. Mm -hmm. And I should go get the book and show you the picture. There's a, I've talked about it before on the podcast, the... Um, Lucifer has decided that he's sick of punishing everybody because that's not his job. He's not there to, to say, oh, you bad person. So instead, mm -hmm. people keep dying and showing up and saying, oh, whip me, beat me, make me hurt. I was such a bad person. Oh, And he's like, you know, you did it to yourself. Just to be. And he gets sick of it finally because, of course, he was the angel of music and he was an angel. And so he's a little PO'd at not being recognized as something more important. So he has Dream cut off his, his wings and he just walks off into the sunset, which means now Dream has the key to hell, doesn't want it, has the key to hell and somebody needs to take over. And Neil Gaiman had all of the major gods from the last 4,000 years show up, including oh, wow. chaos and order. Nice. I, 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 before I looked at the page, I never would have, I would have said that there's no way to represent that in a comic book or in a graphic novel because how, how do you do that? And yeah. he did. This is wow. Amazing. That's cool. Yeah. That one is that, uh, that book is called season of mists. And I think it's, I think it's the best of the whole. It, it doesn't have the midsummer night's dream story in it, which is also very good, but, um, but it's pretty darn tootin' awesome. And the TV show Lucifer totally takes that same tack with, um, with their Lucifer character, that he's not into making people do bad things. He's into hmm. judge, judgment. He wants to punish the bad people because that's what he's been doing. And so when he sees somebody up here doing something bad, his instinct is to flatten them. And... That's interesting. That's why he works well with cops because he's he's kind of the judge and jury. And good luck. Hmm. <laughs> interesting. It, it yeah, a, that's one I haven't watched, but it's definitely it's a literature-based take on that whole uh, storyline. Mm -hmm. Which which is, you know, it's like the guy who did um, who was it who did the? I know Juliet Forgotten Classics read it. The guy who did. There was God a biography, but there was also the guy who did the book of Genesis who went through and revisited all of the um, chapters and verses in, in the book of Genesis mm -hmm. and went back to compare different translations because Aramaic is such a pain in the butt and we don't know what some of the words really meant. And it's, um, it's lovely to take, uh, to take a look at that stuff fresh the same way that that you're you are about to walk into some really interesting mythology revisits in american gods you're almost to my favorite part well it's really and i keep trying to when i first told sarah about it you know described what it was about she's like well that's like percy jackson that's like the percy jackson books and i'm like no it's not i said and this predates Percy Jackson. 
This yes. came out in 2000. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. did this before Rick Reardon did it. Yeah. So yeah. I think Rick Reardon probably uh, got some ideas from him. Right. But yeah, I, so, um, I agree. It's definitely more adult than the Rick Reardon, Percy Jackson, uh -huh. and the Egypt ones and all that. So yeah. I can't wait to hear from you next week when you have finished this because you will. It is not. Put I probably will. And the other, I will also have news about the whole uh, sleep apnea thing next week because I have my second sleep study this week, the one where I wear the CPAP and then they adjust it and see how I need it set to have zero incidents per hour instead of 25 incidents per hour. Good um, Lord. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. I um, can't wait to hear. Uh, to hear how how um, how you sleep with that thing, because I know people. I say can't it wait to find sound. out what a good night's sleep feels like. I just I, can't wait. I'm gonna look like Bane, but I'm gonna get some sleep. So, you um, know, there are worse things to look like at night when no one can see you. Well, one person can see me. So I think yeah. you'd rather see a happy Erica in the morning. Well, I think he'd rather not hear Erica snore <laughs> and not worry that Erica's going to die in her sleep from not breathing. Um, there's, there's that too. Yeah. No, I think and, this is uh, sweet. Yeah, and they, the, uh, the little mouth, mouthpiece thing isn't an option for me because I have really bad TMJ in my jaw. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then there's this other one that's not an option for me because uh, nasal cannula drive me up the wall and down the other. Um, but yeah, my TMJ, I have fun TMJ. I have a snake jaw. Wow. Oh, wait, hang on. Ah, okay. Do you see that? Now do it again. See it come out? Wow. You can unhinge. I'm, I, guess, I come unhinged very easily, yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, that, had made me, that had made me think of something that I needed to update you on. Shoot, what were we talking about right before? Oh, I know what it is. I was going to announce the next um, premium book here first. Oh, you'll hear it here first, people. Um, I, I needed to listen to something in the car on the way back. I used up all the podcasts that I'd, I'd wanted to listen to, and I started scrolling through some selections on Audible that I'd been thinking about, and I found one that was read by my friend from university, Scott Brick. And I said, ooh, well, then I'm going to have to listen to this one. And I listened to his version of The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. Ah. And it was so funny to be listening to a book, knowing that it was kind of a candidate for inclusion. And I, I could, if I'd had a camera on me, you all would have laughed so hard because every time something historical, complicated, or uh, a word that either I didn't know or I knew that nobody used very often anymore came up, I reached for a pencil as I was driving. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't need to do that now. I can just drive. But it's a it's a shorter book than I thought it was, but it's it's very very good. Oh, cool! Yeah. Have you um, ever watched the show Warehouse Thirteen? I love Warehouse Thirteen. I miss Warehouse. Have you seen the episodes with H.G. Wells? I love her, and she know, played isn't... um she played uh Kate's sister Kate's sister in Taming of the Shrew in the reboot that they did on the BBC. Why can't she, oh, I haven't seen that. What's her name? It's not Tatiana. That's the girl in Orphan Black. Oh, my God. Oh, the girl in Orphan Black is amazing. Isn't she? There's a podcast. No. If anybody who's listening watches Orphan Black, there is a podcast called Tatiana is Everyone. <laughs> and she is. And, um, and it's, it's a lot of fun. And the people who work on the show know the podcast. And several of them have shown up on, on the podcast as well. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, and if, if anybody's, I was going to say, if anybody's interested in hearing a 
review of Warehouse 13 from a slightly different slant. Miss Calendar did an episode about it. And uh, mm. let's just say, I don't think the word she would use to describe it is love. Um, oh, well, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't high art by any stretch. But yeah, it, no, it was, it's definitely brain candy. Yeah. Um, but that's what but, I wanted. Uh, Yes. It, was, it was a fun formula, and um, I don't think you could say much more in praise of it than that. It was a really fun formula, and mm -hmm. there, were, there were nights where I looked at Andrew and said, wow, tonight was the good writer, because it seemed like there was one. <laughs> we have this happen on several shows. On Grimm, the same thing happens where all of a sudden they'll say something, and I say, oh, well, this week wasn't the good writer. It's just uh, when they don't try to fill the holes or, or make the bad guy bad, they just decide to make everybody else stupid temporarily. That's, that's no fun. Not good. I, watched that I, on, on I need Aladdin. to see the last season. I haven't seen the last season of it. Um, so I need to Dude. find the last season and watch it. She's very good. I'm watching the new thing by... Um, Aaron Paul, who was the who was Jesse? Oh on, yeah, on yeah, Pink Breaking Man. Down. I know. I can't say that his his line uh, on the podcast or on the the crafty chat, but he's playing a grown up in a thing called. I keep wanting to say the abyss, but it's not. It's he's in a cult, and that doesn't say. Of course, they say we're a movement, not a cult, but it's. It's about a guy who married into the group and has to wrestle with uh, having doubts and, and knowing that this is not a group of people who embrace doubt or uh -huh. uh, are, are very good at introspection about things like this. It's like, you know, if, when I've had students before who, who had issues with using... The Bible in class is a piece of literature to back up something like in the Scarlet Letter. It was always like, to me, the, the problem isn't reading the book like literature. In this simple context, it's it, how can your faith be that weak not to be able to just look at like the snake in the garden and recognize that people are going to use that as as a symbol because it speaks volumes so quickly to have a serpent show up and sure. um, and and that was always a really cool moment because the kids stopped they they would always have this moment where they would stop and say oh no you're right my faith is stronger than that see that's that's what mm -hmm. i thought but nobody would ever put it to them like that before and and um and so they didn't have any reason to even acknowledge how strong their faith was real you know for real and so there it's very interesting right. to watch a group of adults where at one point he does say isn't there any room for doubt and they said not here and you just think oh god mm -hmm. oh. Oh. interesting oh oh but but if you like aaron paul Sarah and Abby are on a big um, criminal minds binge they went all the way back to season one episode one and, and are going through and he's in an episode Aaron Paul is in an episode where he plays this this emo Satanist guy his jet black hair uh, Sarah just corrected me on something but I couldn't hear because I've got headphones on. Emo, emo goth guy emo, not an emo Satanist there's a difference is it, he's, he's what? A goth Oh, excuse me, goth Satanist, not emo Satanist. There's a difference. So jet black hair, heavy black eyeliner, and every and it, it's just, it's awesome. It's it's awesome. It's so nice um, to know that he can act. Yeah, yeah, that would be. I I would be interested in seeing that new show just to see him see his range, see him be something completely different. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, and I'm pretty nice sure he was him. in the next files too. Yeah, he was. He was in that one with the kid who can draw flies. You should just put oh. her on. 
Yeah, she said he was in the one with the kid who could control flies. <laughs> Tara, Tara is now calling her the teenager of righteousness. Uh, yeah. Hey, Sarah. Hey. You, you've just been dubbed the teenager of righteousness. Welcome. She says you're welcome. <laughs> We're, your mic is picking her up beautifully. Oh, is it? Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. No, we can hear her quite well. That's awesome. I love teenagers. This is why I love teenagers. They're so cool. Yeah, she's, she's pretty amazing. I'm looking down to see if there's anything else I needed to tell everybody about. I think we got all the good stuff. Hopefully oh. next week I'll have some really fun Sarah-related news for you. Good. I look forward to that. And next week I will have a mermaid tail crafty thing to share with you. One of those blankets? The mermaid tail I, pouch blanket thing? I just came across them, and I have to keep it under wraps, so to speak, or thing two will be on me like glue, and, uh, and I'm going to have to do one surreptitiously for him. Oh, uh, okay. It will happen. All right. Cool. Thank you, everyone, for coming and, and yes. uh, hanging out and making me laugh. All your comments in the comments are so much fun. Oh, I know. And thanks for not heckling me too badly for showing up with wet hair and all of that. I wish I could look as good as you with wet hair and all of that. <laughs> smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors and bad lighting. I thought you were going to say smoking hot. That's what I am. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> no. I, 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 at times I may joke like that, but I can't get away with that kind of joke with my kid just a few feet away from me because she will correct me for sure. Yeah. She, she will, uh, yeah. The, the typical response is, ew, gross, mom. So, yeah. Uh, another reason why it's good to have them around. Mm, There's a yes. reality check thing that I, I get from the, the kids. And every once in a while, I have to turn around and say, you are so lucky I am your mother. And they'll look back and say, we know. Because <laughs> if they had a mom who didn't get their sense of humor, they would have been kicked out of the house a long time ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Having a 12-year-old come up and say, talk to the palm. You're not the bomb. I, I haven't heard it with the second phrase added on there. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have to try that one. That's kicking it old school, just so you know. That that takes you back well, into the 90s. Well, you know, I went in, in a couple of days, I went from being, your mom is woke, to you're such a white mom. <laughs> with, with, and that was just because I was taking pictures at the band barbecue then to be your band barbecue. But my response to that accusation was, I can't help it. I'm white and I'm a mom. So yes, I'm a white mom. There are these what things. Else am I going to be? Yeah. I, well, I'm, I told my students I'm not white. I'm actually translucent because you can see the veins. <laughs> veins? So. I, I have that too. Yes. Clear. Think, I'm clear. <laughs> I think that that's a, an important distinction that, that needs to be made frequently and not probably around adults who wouldn't find it very funny at all, but did, kids seem to. Did, did you hear Sarah's comment that at least I'm not like one of her friends who glows in the dark? <laughs> My aunt who makes the, the bags for me, she used to say she could read by her legs at night. Oh, lovely. Yep. Lovely. We're, yeah, we're so off topic, but that's fine. I, it's all going to get edited out anyway. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I have to go record yeah. this episode too. Although this chapter doesn't require a whole lot on on the, the me side of things, so that's probably just as well. Next week, I think there's more that I have to do. I just have to figure oh, out how to record. I need in. to get caught up. Yes, yes, I'm yes. Behind. Everybody, we are getting to the good part of Count of Monte Cristo. So if you are hoarding it, now is a good time to listen up to chapter listen up to chapter 23 or so or you could go all the way to 25 25 is a fine stopping point well 26 will be a fine stopping point so yeah. i think i'm in 23 but oh you're in a good place That's oh and i'm sorry i was late i had planned to be early but i got a call from the fraud department of the credit card company so i had to oh. deal with that is and, and everything uh, okay just say yeah yay capital one for catching things um 
Good. They caught some stuff. And so unfortunately, I have to go through the hassle of my credit card being canceled and being reissued a new one with a different number and all the pain in the butt that that is. Yeah. But I really, really uh, love Capital One for how they, uh, they, they, catch, they catch things. And they, awesome. they've even called us before when it was um, not fraud, but just unusual, you know, and they called us like, no, 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 that's legit. So anyhow, props to Capital One Fraud Department. Yay. Yay. That's awesome. Well, have a great week. I can't wait to hear how all the sleep stuff goes. I can't wait to hear how you feel after a real night of sleep. I know. It's so cool. Yay. All right. Everybody have a great week. So nice to see everybody. I know we already said our goodbyes. Everybody's already said goodbye in the, the thing. Oh. But they're still here because we are too. So, yes. so bye. So, ta -a. Have a good week. We'll talk to you next week. Bye.